7 p.m. on March 23rd, 2023. So I'm going to open up the um, Deerfield Conservation Commission meeting for tonight and I'll let you open the meeting. Um, Got to go through a couple of things first and then we'll get down to the agenda. Um, so meetings that are normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely uh, with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, MGL chapter 30A section 20 until March 31 of 2023. Uh, meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television as well. Um, the agenda and the um, Zoom numbers and the contact numbers, the dial-in numbers, et cetera, has all been posted on <clears throat> the town's website. And um, I think we're ready to go. So meeting attendees should uh, mute your phones, please. Uh, do hear some background on somebody, but if you can mute your phones when you're not um, asking questions or commenting, that would be great. And then um, let me go through the meeting guidelines for the town of Deerfield. Um, we ask that you speak one at a time, uh, follow the Deerfield code of conduct, uh, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. And for this meeting tonight, uh, I would ask that you please address the chair to be recognized to speak. And unless presenting, uh, please hold your comments to a two or three minute time frame or less. Uh, presenters certainly will have more time to go through their um, through their information. Um, okay, so I just want to take a roll call of the Conservation Commission members present. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne here. All right, and Pete Law is here, so we're good to go. Got a quorum and ready to go. Um, so we do have a lot of folks on the call tonight, and we do have a fairly full agenda. Um, so I can only apologize up front that it might be a lengthy meeting. So for some of you that are that towards the uh, the ending of the agenda, uh, We'll get you as, as fast as we can, uh, but we do have a lot of things to uh, discuss this evening, so I appreciate your patience. Um, the first thing we need to look at, and this is for the commissioners um, only themselves, is the review of the minutes from our last meeting, which was held on February 23, 2023. Uh, did you all receive them? Did you all review them? Did you have any comments uh, and or need revisions of the meetings that were um, were sent out for the February 23. No, I hear none. I see none on the screen. Okay, then I would uh, ask for I a can, motion to accept the meetings. I would make a motion to accept the meeting minutes for 2-23-23 uh, as, as written. I second that, Kate Devlin. Okay, so we have a motion and second. Any other comments from the commissioners? Motion on the floor. I see none, so I'll take a roll call to um, accept the minutes of 2 23 um, as written and supplied to us. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Uh, ben Byrne, I will abstain. I believe I was absent from that meeting. Yep. Okay. And Pete Law, aye. So the meetings as written will be accepted. Um, motion passes. So we're set on that one, Amy. All right. Well, now we can get to um, the meat of the agenda, I guess. <clears throat> um, first, we start with new business. Um, the first one is 72 Mill Village Road. Map 123, parcel 18. Uh, we discussed this last month. Um, there were some concerns raised by an abutter about the facility there. Um, we did ask the uh, health agent, Board of Health, to take a look at it. Uh, they were scheduled for last week, I think, with the snowfall. They uh, postponed it till today. Um, 
uh, received their report. They're working through some things. We still have to make a determination, um, and, and I'll have to speak to some other the folks on this, whether we need a um, conservation uh, commission site visit uh, to be determined. So that's still up in the air, but that um, that process is moving forward. So um, no motion needed on that. It's just the um, information. Any questions from the commissioners? Okay, we'll keep you posted on that one. Um, the second item tonight is on 670 River Road, and I believe we see Kevin on the on the screen. Here. Kevin Bordeaux, Bordeaux, uh, who is the property owner. Um, this is for Map 44 Parcel 10. It is it involves the um, request for. Um, establishing a new barn on the sitting foundations uh, on the property. Um, the property just extends, just is in the uh, range of the northern boundary of the uh, bordering land of uh, flood zone. And so that does come within our jurisdiction to, um, to take a look at that. And Kevin, there may be, an, Amy might be able to help you out with this, but there may be some other um, requirements for the planning board. I just don't know where that ended up um, on that side. But I think, Kevin, if you want to um, talk for a minute, explain where you're at, I think you're looking at for um, you know, some type of agriculture exemption uh, relative to 310 CMR 10. Correct. Uh, but uh, if you go ahead and we'll, we'll gladly listen and see what we can do. Uh, there's an existing barn there now, which is in kind of form of disrepair. And I'm looking to replace that barn utilizing the same footprint. <clears throat> That's pretty much the basis of, and I, I did have chickens there. I removed, and we also had horses. We have horses. Um, and I didn't want to keep them in there due to the fact that the structure is really not in the best shape so uh, that that's the main reason why I'm, I'm looking to replace it okay and then you are kind of asking for um looking at the agricultural um i call them exemption but the definition on agriculture for um uh, that are reduced so can you explain what the what your usage will be going forward and so forth uh, well, the property that I have beyond the barn is being farmed. Um, I, I do have tractors and, and mowers that maintain the property there. Uh, so the building would be used for storage for that. Okay. And as I kind of read through uh, 310 uh, CMR 10, 10.4 definitions, um, you know, land and agriculture use means land within the resource areas, et cetera. I'm sorry? The one section that I noticed in, in the one section that I noticed in this, uh, the mass or the 310, 10.4, um, it was in section C, uh, just under the forestry, uh, normal improvement land agricultural use, um, section one, line C, construction of farm structures not including habitable dwellings, provided that footprint of the farm structure does not exceed 4,000 square feet, which mine would be 1,500 square feet, and, and no filling of bordering land subject to flooding occurs beyond the footprint of the building. <clears throat> And so you're looking at um, coming to us and saying that um, I guess asking us that, uh, what our uh, either recommendation is or whether we have oversight on that on that facility at this point is that type of the request tonight because there's no RDA there's no NAI there's no no forms or any applications submitted. No, I, I had applied for a building permit initially. Uh, yeah. And then we came into this floodplain issue. 
Um, but I was looking for the agricultural exemption due to the fact the property is being farmed. It will be agriculturally used. Okay. And so forth. <clears throat> okay. So that ex explains it, I think, for the other commissioners. Um, I forget the date. I have it here someplace in my calendar, but um, Sean Libby and I did a site visit um, several months ago to look at the facility. Um, Sean, do you want to have any comments on on that at this point or? No, I mean, I think he was pretty clear then and now as to the size and scope of the project uh -huh. and its location. Um, uh, that date was on January 18th. Okay. Yeah, time flies. Yeah. Uh, any other comments from the commissioners or anybody? from the commissioners at this point? No. Any other comments from anybody else on the call today from the public? OK. So it, it reading through the regs uh, and talking through it, uh, Kevin, uh, if it's in agricultural use, which you say is going to be, um, it's a footprint on the same footprint, on the, basically the same foundations, just replacing one to the next. Agricultural use um, is an exemption for that. The sizing is well under um, where you need to be. And then I don't see any more formal application from the Conservation Commission at, at this point. Uh, I think you have to just work with the, um, uh, the building inspector uh, and, and getting those things put together. Now, if there is any, is there going to be any other activity, any um, movement of materials, dirt, stockpiling of anything in the back of the barn or in that area? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, and I can talk with the person that's going to be doing the, the site work um, to make sure that we keep that out of that area. I can, you know, keep it out of the floodplain. That would be sufficient, correct? If we're doing any, you know, for the foundation footings, things like that, anything that's required to be um, site work, uh, the ground, you know, we have to kind of level that area out in within the footprint mm -hmm. for the floor uh, of the barn. Uh, that could be stored outside of that floodplain zone, correct? As long as nothing's altered within that. Uh, toward the, I guess it would be the west, uh, east side of the barn. East side toward of the, the barn, river. yeah. The river. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can certainly do whatever is required um, to, to not infringe on that uh, area. Yeah. Do you know how much material you would, would have to move for that? I mean, I'm just ask, I, I'll throw it out to the commissioners. Do we need to say if there is any material stored there that it, um, has erosion control around it during the construction or what would be the, the thinking? I, I don't have a handle on the uh, amounts. I don't foresee, um, you know, I've, I've never done site work, so I couldn't tell you 100%, but um, the, the ground, in my opinion, is, is it is pitched a little bit um, toward the river. Yeah. Um, it would require a little bit of um, work within that footprint. Um, but as far as material being brought in, it would be or taken out to, to create that level area. It would be stored well out of that area of the floodplain. Um. Yeah, Pete, my thoughts are if there was a resource area downstream that we would look for protections, you know, just for any exposed soils that were being stored temporarily. But here we're looking at, you know, the proximity to the floodplain. So with the size and scope of the building, um, I probably would not find a need to, to pass any motions regarding. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And when would the work be planned for, Kevin? Uh, I'm, I'm still in the, the permitting stage. I have to put a deposit on the building. I, I really thought that starting at this point, 
uh, dealing with the commission, going through the proper procedures to make sure that we could actually secure a permit. Um, I don't have a time frame as of yet. I just I figured I'd start here um, and then go to yeah. the next, you know, to the building Everything. permit process. Yeah, well, it won't they be. Have come down, I guess. They, they haven't gotten to it. What are they doing? Um, nope. A barn. Nope. I'm sorry. Uh, don't have the name, but uh, no. number ending with 0362. If you could just mute out uh, at the moment, that'd be great. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's definitely not looking like it's going to happen in the... Uh, you know, in the next few months, which is going to be more flood flood area, uh, right. you know, April, May, early June. Yeah. But the way the climate is these days, you can never know when the floods are going to come <laughs> around. But um, yeah. if anything, it would be toward the end of the summer. Okay. Well, any other comments from the commissioners? No. Okay. Well, Kevin, I I think you know reading through it and talking with others and going through and, and thank you to Amy to pulling up um, all the regs and, and yourself, but I, I, I'm not going to say that we're going to request an RDA or anything of that nature for what it is and just work with a building permit. And, um, you know, if there's any other questions, you know, bring it to us, but we appreciate it, you know, being brought to our attention, uh, you know, up front. It's, it's great. Yeah, I appreciate all your help and input, and uh, I'll be in touch with uh, Bob then, I guess. Yeah, okay. We'll go forward from there. So I guess, do we need to wait for your uh, meeting results uh, to be, you know, given to Bob so he can go forward from there, or, or um, am I good to go to talk to him now? Let me just double check with my, with my administrator here, Amy. Uh, <laughs> would the... Uh, minutes of the meeting suffice or should we put together just a quick letter that uh, the commission met and that um, we, you know, we don't see applicability. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I think the, the okay. bar here is pretty low. If, if I go in and say to Bob tomorrow that it's okay, um, that's good. But we, you know, we should have something in writing to back it up minutes or just a quick letter or something just so that we have that for the okay. record. All right, so Amy, we'll talk to Bob tomorrow just to get him up to speed. But um, Amy, let's uh, between you and I just put together a, a quick letter together, just so that that Kevin has it for his files and we have it for our files, and uh, we check the boxes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I can Great. do that. All right. Thank you. All right. All righty. Thank you very Kevin, much. We're good. All right. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. The third new business is the uh, RDA received uh, in the last couple of weeks for 70 Old Main Street, map 61, parcel 14. This is up by the um, Deerfield Academy area on 5 and 10. And I believe, yes, we have Kate uh, Wilkins from Tie and Bond. Uh, Kate, are you going to address us tonight? or? Uh... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you <laughs> go ahead and give us, uh, you know, your presentations. I've read through it. Uh, just couple of questions, um, but I would definitely want to hear from you on it. Sounds good. Um, again, my name is Kate Wilkins with Time Bond. Um, Alex Boothalette is also on from Time Bond. He's the project engineer um, okay. for, the, for the project proposed. Um, so as was discussed, this is um, a project over at Deerfield Academy. Um, the proposed work is a curb cut to access the dormitories for maintenance just easier access off of five and 10 instead of going through the campus. Um, it's in the area just south of Cheslick's farm stand. Um, but uh, if you know the campus at all, there's a few, um, there are a few uh, greenhouses in that area. I don't know if it's worthwhile for me to share my screen just to show kind of an aerial photo of where we're talking, if that's appropriate. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay. So here's just the Google Street or Google Earth image of where we're generally talking. So you've got uh, Cheslick's farm stand up here, the greenhouses that are currently in place and the dormitories um, to the west within the DA campus. So this curb cut is going to take place um, right in this area where these, where these two white um, structures are, look like they're uh, 
uh, buses or vans or something um, in here. So the curb cut would be um, through these this hedgerow, um, opening it up and um, repaving this portion of uh, the new access route. Um, there is a vegetated wetland in this strip of uh, the adjacent yeah. property across five and 10, um, but along the sides of the roadway are, um, there's drainage swales. There's a few catch basins in the roadway here as well, but they're they're pretty well maintained by the town. Um, so that um, this is kind of the gist of the project. The work is the curb cut through, repaving, um, adding in a gate in that location. Um, some of the roadway will need to be repaved just from the disturbance. Um, and the proposed project area is within the outer 100 foot buffer zone from this uh, vegetated wetland over in the uh, adjacent property to the east. You said it was outside the 100 foot or wasn't wasn't there it's, part it's in it? It's inside the 100 yeah. foot. It's just, yeah. uh, so One right here is a, yeah. just a view of the plan set. I realized that in the packet that we sent, the uh, plans didn't print very well. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, we can resend another plan set that's that's better printed, but this is the proposed work area um, here. So yeah. So, so you've so. got the greenhouses over here. You've got the existing parking lot, and then there's a, a curb cut right in here in the new access route. And you've got your vegetated wetland over here. So this um, thicker dashed line is our 100 foot buffer zone. So right now we have um, a total we're still of seeing the photo. We're not seeing oh, a sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. 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 It's always like it'll let you share one thing and then not share another. How's that? Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Okay. <laughs> Very sorry to be talking that whole time and no one was seeing anything. <laughs> I was looking through my my paperwork and I was like, wait, yeah. wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just kind of as a, a reference of, of where we are, you've got the greenhouses, um, existing yeah. dorms, a parking lot. Um, here's the vegetated wetland. That's There's a berm, a swale, just the roadside drainage five and 10, and then the, the access in where the hedgerow comes along. You can see the, the tree line that's proposed there or existing. All right, and that dash line is the 100 foot? Yep, the thick yeah. dash line, yes, is the 100 foot yep. buffer zone. So we've got 2,200 uh, total square feet of um, work in the buffer zone with uh, 1,200 square feet being new impervious um, within that outer portion of the 100 foot buffer zone. And then a hundred, okay. a thousand square feet of it is being repaved to what it previously is. So, okay. And you're, I, I noticed you're, you're going to repave it. Was there any consideration of um, more permeable materials in in that area, or do you need to match up to the pavement that's already there, or? Alex can add a little more to that, but I believe that since it's within the DOT roadway right away, they wanted it. Repaved yeah. in the roadway, but and then you're not going too far into the Deerfield area. Right. Okay, okay, yep. I see that. Yep. And and uh, Pete, if I may, just add on to what Katie's uh, discussing here. Um, so that the primary purpose of the driveway is to allow access of maintenance vehicles to get in and out. So we did consider initially some sort of previous material, but. Uh, overall, with the the loading that this thing is going to be seeing occasionally with different maintenance and delivery vehicles, and then we did end up going with um, HMA, and it is like Katie also stated, half of this driveway is is in the state DOT um, highway yeah. lane, so that we did have to get a uh, a permit through them as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a explanation. That's good. Uh, um, You said the wetland resource areas uh, in your in your write up on page two will be protected by erosion control barriers. Um, can you tell us just and, and you noted that there'd be filter tubes. Mm -hmm. um, can you show us where they would be and what the uh... so on the opposite side of okay. five and ten we have the uh, filter tubes um, just lining the roadway as well as um, inlet protection on all of the 
uh, catch basins. And the catch basins, okay, so just, yep. okay. So we've got that noted here. Here's the erosion control line um, protecting each area. It does, it is elevated between the roadway and here. Um, this is a depression, there's an elevation in between and then yeah. the roadway. So there's a little bit of added protection just from the landscape, so that's nice, um, but just for that, for added protection and the uh, obviously uh, the silt sacks. And the elevation on the road only looks like it's moving less than a third of a foot, half a foot, okay. Um, Yeah. Okay. So so sacks. So how's the filter tubes? Um, just the tubing, right? Uh, no yes. plastics or anything. Okay. Correct. Yeah. 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 And I didn't see. Uh, maybe it's on the chart of uh, how often you're going to stake it and such. Uh, yeah, that information should be provided on the detail. Yeah. Kate's, Kate's uh, scrolling over to it. So it's going to be two by three, five feet or part. Um, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to put my stakes. Okay. I think every five feet. Matches our new requirements, right? I wrote them. I can't remember, but I think it's five feet. That's good. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, because my my sheets on the eight by ten are kind of hard to read. Yeah. Or eight we, uh, we're happy to whatever there. Yeah. If the commission wants, uh, I, I think we sent in a an electronic copy, but I can always resend that, um, or resend another copy that's printed better just for records no no i see it on on my set now but it's just nice to see it on a, on a larger mm -hmm. screen okay i'm good and you know the catch basis ones okay um existing tree tree protection that's in are there going to be a removal of any other trees besides the head road or no no and you protect that okay all right. I won't keep rambling on. Is there any other questions <laughs> from uh, the other commissioners? Okay. Any other any other needs, commissioners, that you see on this plan that you'd want to be in place, or we just Don't hear anybody, any other comments from anybody else on the public on tonight? They don't see, don't hear. So I would, um, you know, this is pretty straightforward. I thank you for all the the, uh, the design and the information and, and coming on tonight. Um, leave it up to the other commissioners to make a motion, but I think we could probably look at a, uh, a negative Three determination um, on form two, uh, probably without any further conditions, as you know, as long as they follow through and meet the um, what they've outlined in their uh, project plan. So, Kate Devlin, I would like to make a motion that uh, we make a negative uh, determination, negative three determination on form two, um, and as long as you fulfill the, the conditions that are outlined in your in your proposal. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. On the amendments? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just, on the, well, I'm not sure if I can go on the side before I get a second. Um, but I am, I'm just gonna go on this side. Um, I don't think we'll do it with an official condition, but just between us that you know as long as you follow this we're we're good to go so i think the uh the motion's fine do i hear a second sean levy second okay any other comments from the commissioners 
Okay, we got a motion on the floor for the um, to move ahead with a negative three determination on WPA form two for the RDA at 70 Old Main Street. And don't see any other comments or things, so we take a roll call vote to accept. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. All right, Pete Law, aye. So good. I think we're good with that. Um, thank you for all the information and your answer. The few questions I had as I was reading through it, and uh, I think we're going. Unless you guys have any other questions. No, I think we're all set. All right, Kate, Alex, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate have it. Good night. Take care. You too. All right, where's my agenda gone? Here it is. Um, one, two, three, done. Okay. Um, back to old business, although two of the old business, we're going to have to open up the hearing tonight. But um, the first one is uh, tree clearing at, at zero Clark Clark. Yeah, excuse me. My allergies are, are kicking in today. Zero Clark Cross Road. Um, Map 113, lot eight. Um, we had a posted um, site visit there today at 4.30. Uh, it was attended by myself, Sean Libby, Kate Devlin. Um, we talked to the property owner, uh, Thomas Avery, um, to go over some of the um, concerns and considerations that we have on from the, the clear cutting, um, stabilization of some access roads, and um, erosion control protection areas. Um, Kate, Sean, do you want to add comments to to our visits, uh, what you saw today or what you're thinking and, and so forth? Yeah, I just would reiterate that um, probably a temporary stabilization and uh, with a secondary longer term solution to the primary access road as it leaves the railroad bed um, will be necessary to prevent sedimentation downstream. Yeah, something needs to happen soon because it's already, um, the stream is already showing a lot of silt. Yeah, it's coming out and we're coming into uh melting season and rain season and so forth. Um, I don't believe Tom is on tonight. I don't see his name. Um, but we left it, Amy, that I need to do uh, a few checks. Um, but basically, the property owner has agreed to initially um, put in some erosion control measures, um, most likely um, the, the wattles with plastic behind them in different areas. I need to get um, a map. Uh, maybe you can help me with that tomorrow, a map from um, either GIS or the assessor's map, or I believe he had it um, surveyed last year for uh, one of the changes with the uh, planning board. Uh, but we work on that so I can help them locate where uh, we would recommend the erosion control materials to be put in place. Um, there is an issue that I'm going to have to talk with DEP on at the bottom of the access road um, for that long-term stabilization that um, that Sean mentioned. Um, so I, I do want to move on that pretty quick so we can get um, some of the things uh, stabilized uh, soon um, relative to the erosion control. So, um, Amy, let's uh, reach out. I can reach out to you tomorrow and go through what is kind of needed. But that's kind of the um, the plan going ahead. There's no forms. There's no applications. There's just you know a clear cut area that was brought to our attention by the, the forestry from um, from the state of Mass uh, notification up there, and we're just reacting to. Um, potential 
erosion controls monitoring into some of the resource areas. Uh, I don't want to say identified, but you know that we noted today during our site visit out there. Um, so that would be the uh, step forward. Um, still some work to do on that, but that um, that needs to be um, kind of like um, Kate just said, finalized pretty quickly. And uh, I'll I'll work with the team and and with Amy to to get some things in place um, and get the property owner a uh, a notification of uh, expectation as long as well as with criteria for what is acceptable as a erosion control uh, materials uh, in Deerfield. So that makes sense, Amy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that makes perfect sense. So okay. I will I'll start looking for the ANR map tomorrow. See if I can yeah. find that. Okay, and I'll uh, I'll try to touch base with you sometime tomorrow or or pretty quickly. But we want to put something together, so we'll need okay. a map and letter and stuff. So yeah, uh, sounds it was good. good. It was uh, you know a good meeting. Good to see the site. Um, and I think uh, property owner is open to um, trying to take care of it. So. Anything else from Sean or Kate that was at the site visit today? No. Okay. All right. Well, we're actually moving through this fairly well tonight, but let's see what happens next. Um, so we need to open up the hearing um, for um, project at Eagle Brook School. Um, so hold a public meeting starting tonight. We open up the hearing, consider a notice of intent. It was filed by Wes Smith of Eaglebrook School for the construction of a new dining hall, including construction of new sidewalks, reconstruction of a portion of a parking lot to a cul-de-sac access drive, site grading, and construction of a subsurface stormwater infiltration system on property. Uh, it's identified as the assessor's record as map 62, lots 13 and 14, map 68, lots five and six, and map 69, lots 52 and 58. So let's see, who do we have on this evening that's going to represent uh, Eagle Brook and give us some, some background on this? Yeah, I, um, my name is Jesse Marino. I'm with uh, Proterra Design Group. We're one of the design engineers. Um, on the project. And if I could, I'd like to share my screen a little bit and I can introduce some other folks that are on too um, that can help answer any questions. Yeah, pl please do. Thank you. Let me know if you can see my screen there. It should uh, be a little, little presentation here I put together for you. Everybody see that? Yep. I got it now. Everybody okay, see it all right? So yep. Yep, so we're here tonight uh, for a notice of intent filed for a proposed dining uh, hall and site improvements at the Eagle Brook School. Um, what it is, it's a phase project to build a new dining hall and there's associated uh, site and stormwater improvements with that. Uh, the applicant here is the Eagle Brook School. Uh, several consultants are working on this project um, here tonight with us. I have Tom Johnson, who's also from Proterra Design Group. We have Wes Smith from Eagle Brook School. And we have Joe Orzel, who's a professional wetland scientist with Lucas Environmental. Um, just a little bit of background here. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Eagle Brook School, but um, uh, they're an independent boarding and day school for uh, boys in grades six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, school's been around for a while. It's been founded in 1922. Um, sort of in the, in the Deerfield area here on the side slopes of the Pecumtuck Range. Um, it's an 800 acre campus, so it's a real big site. Um, and it, uh, it educates over 250 students from um, 23 countries and 19 states. Um, the area um, on campus here where we're gonna be building the dining hall is sort of central campus in this location right here. A little bit of context, we have Pine Nook Road and we have County Road here at the bottom. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail here in a second. Um, when you read in um, this evening to open the hearing, 
uh, there's several uh, parcels that the work takes place on. Uh, it's about 120, or excuse me, about 112 acres of that 800 acre campus. Um, the majority of the work though is on this large lot here. It's an 86 acre parcel. Um, that's where the dining hall is gonna be sort of in the middle here. And then we have our stormwater improvements down here on uh, the varsity field. So the proposed uh, project consists again of the construction of a new dining hall that's located here. Um, associated grading, utility work, and a newer sewer connection uh, down to Pine Nook. Um, we're also constructing a new stormwater management system, and we're doing some repairs and installation of a new culvert. Uh, the proposed work with the dining hall will occur partially within the 100 foot buffer zones to BVW and Bank. And there is some temporary disturbance to install that culvert, about 250 square feet of BVW. Um, this is some photos of the site. This is looking uh, in a southerly direction. Um, right here is where we're gonna, is where the uh, dining hall is proposed. Um, down here below, you can see some of the athletic fields. Um, that area is gonna be the stormwater detention area. Um, and we're gonna actually build this area up so that there's an underground system beneath these fields. Uh, this is looking northerly. Um, there's an existing parking lot here. This parking lot's gonna be kind of repurposed into a turnaround and smaller parking area. And that'll allow uh, access for deliveries into the new building. Again, the new building, the new dining hall is gonna be located in this portion of the hill in this region. Uh, this is a sort of an architect's uh, plan. Um, just here to show you that it's sort of the footprint here. It's a 38,000 square foot building, it's multi-level. Uh, its main purpose is a dining hall, um, but I believe it's also gonna have a store and, and some other amenities as well. Um, this here is an elevation view. Um, the idea here to take away is that the, um, the, new, the new dining hall aims to preserve some of the Western facing views off the campus. Um, so a lot of the structure is built into the hill uh, that's sort of the point of, of looking at this map here that I'm showing you. Um, the takeaway here is that uh, most of the dining hall is built into the side of the hill. So a little bit more about the property. Um, so we're on the sort of the western slopes of the Pocumtuck Range. Um, to the east here lies some additional classroom buildings. Uh, there's administrative buildings, athletic fields are to the south and west. Uh, further down, there's hockey rinks and, and uh, sports center and uh, maintenance, maintenance buildings. Uh, the site soils here are uh, basically, there's kind of glacial till along the side slopes here. As we move further west, it gets sandier, um, a little bit finer soils. Um, as we continue to move, you get towards uh, the Deerfield River uh, Valley here where you get uh, um, sort of more river valley uh, fine sediments. Um, the good thing here, uh, we're not located in the floodplain. You can see here, um, we have the Hall Road, uh, temporary Hall Road. This is the uh, field and stormwater facility. And then up in this location here is the dining hall. Uh, we are fully outside the floodplain. Um, we are also not located in any area of uh, rare habitats or priority species, been able to keep all the work outside of that. Um, we also are not in any ACECs or outstanding resource waters or surface water protection areas. Um, however, we are in a zone two uh, to some local wells here. Um, the impact for the project is that um, we just need to do uh, some enhanced stormwater treatment, uh, which we will talk about in a little bit. But let's talk a little bit here about um, the description of the resource areas. We do have the wetland scientist here, Jor Ozell from Lucas Environmental, who can go into more detail, but I'll start with just an overview. Um, so along Pine Nook Road here, there's an intermittent stream 
Uh, that's in this area. So there's some bordering vegetated wetlands associated with that. Um, sort of upgrading of us to the east, there's Whipple Pond. Um, there's some vegetated wetland associated with that. Um, there's a small area to the south of the new dining hall here. There's an isolated wetland and some BVW in this area. We're not impacting this area or this area. Um, further down the hill, um, this is where the stormwater system is. This is where some of the, the fields are. There's this is called varsity field here. So the stormwater system is going to be under here. Um, there's a series of uh, boring vegetated wetlands and some intermittent channels that are a result of groundwater weeps coming out of the hill here, uh, heading west. And we'll drill in here a little bit on the north. Um, we talked about um, Pine Nook Road, that intermittent channel that comes down the hill. Uh, there's an existing access here with a sort of a large parking lot. Um, we're going to, um, in subsequent phases here, remove that parking lot, and it's going to become a, a sort of a student drop-off and turnaround. Um, uh, but one of the things we need to do in this area here is we're going to uh, uh, install a new sewer utility down uh, to Pine Nook Road for the new building, and we are going to put an outlet level spreader here uh, to mitigate uh, uh, runoff uh, heading towards the stream. So now uh, this is some more of the site plans that we submitted. Um, basically, there was a notice of intent package, uh, some drainage calculations, and a plan set. This is a sheet of one of the plan sets. Um, just go a little bit over here, uh, the project sort of project summary. Again, uh, in this area, this is the new uh, multi-story dining hall building. Um, it's, it's set into the hillside to take advantage of passive solar and the uh, preservation of those Western vistas. It will have photovoltaic so, uh, solar panels and geothermal wells, as well as green roots. Um, there, this area, as we saw in the beginning um, and on the aerials, um, there's not a lot of clearing here. It's basically uh, grass and meadow now. So um, we have very little uh, mature vegetation that we need to clear uh, to put in the project. Um, the project earthwork uh, to to put in this building is gonna be contained on the site. Um, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our temporary haul road, the haul material down uh, to the lower uh, field where we're gonna put the new stormwater system in and we're gonna use the material for backfill around that area and to um, um, uh, refurbish the field. I gotta ask a question. Sure. A temporary haul road. That is the road going up to your maintenance area off of County Road. Yep, um, we can get that's in there where a they've later. cut down all the oak that. trees. Say it again. I said that's where they've cut down all those oak trees, and you're going to go right across the soccer field. Um, let's see if I have a picture of that area here. Yeah, so the hall roads here, this is the maintenance facility. Right. So there's kind of a natural road there now. So there really isn't much clearing in this area. We're going to kind of create that hall road. Well, the problem is that I own the house right across from there. And your wetlands diagram there in 1979, when they built those soccer fields, they didn't do any wetlands thing because they, they plugged the sponge that was the swamp in that area. So your runoff now goes right down through the left side of my property as you're facing west. And it has that culvert in it that never got totally fixed. Um, and the rest of the runoff that comes from between the two maintenance buildings dumps out right in the middle of my property. And that gutter hasn't been fixed since it was since that building was built. So now the water runs right down my driveway. But I guess my big question is, how much equipment are you going to be putting on County Road up that hall road? Well, the idea here is that the equipment and deliveries can come up here. 
Again, the most of the earthwork is contained on site. We're going to the, the majority of the hauling is going to go from the central part of the area uh, down to the lower field area. So I think that'll reduce a lot of the traffic that'd be going off site. So we're we're trying to balance the site. So many of that, many of those trips are going to remain on site. Well, I just it's the road got paved, I don't know, 20 years ago. And if you're gonna start running the heavy trucks up there, the way you did when you were pulling out those 25,000 gallon oil tanks, are you gonna, is there anything in your plans to fix the road after you've done all the work? I've been here for 50 years and I haven't seen a lot of repair work up here. Yeah, well, currently we don't, but uh, you know, I'm sure that's, you know, maybe we can, talk about that a little later. Um, I'd like to kind of finish and right. we can no, do some more questions. I just want to kick those ideas out there now so sure. that they don't bite you in the ass later. Yep. I know that um, I believe just north of you, and um, there's someone else in the call here that can, it can help out, but um, I think the town did repair one of those culverts down where the ice skating rink is there, if I recall. Right. Actually, that was, that was right at the base of the room, the rink yeah. there. And yeah, the that, town um, did the so, culvert on the north end of my driveway. Uh, what Kevin did it th two years ago, three years ago. But the yeah. culvert, yeah. The, the rill where the runoff from the maintenance area goes, it comes out of a surface pipe, four inch PVC, and dumps right there on the surface. Okay. Well, anyway, that other one I know okay. that uh, when we walked the site uh, just about a year ago. That was in poor shape and the town was pretty good about going in there. And, and I'd be more it. than happy yeah. to walk with you. And yeah, uh, the this is Pete I had was in forest management and wildlife. Yeah, this is Pete Lott and thank you, Mr. Ricca. Um, we did do an emergency um, review of that covert last year and work with Kevin on the DPW to work on that one. Um, some of the issues of fixing the roads with the, with the equipment is beyond the aspects of the conservation commission um but we should bring those up and i, I appreciate that um but i would like to uh yeah get back, back to, to the media. Uh, i just i don't know how and... else to get my perspective in this yeah at just a time uh, where it can be thought of yeah no just raise your hand and uh ask me to to speak and we'll we'll get to to hear you on that but we definitely okay. appreciate it i've um, said my piece because we're going to have a couple other questions coming up as well so um appreciate it um so mr marino do you want to continue yeah yeah no problem um again the idea is that the earthwork on the site we're going to try to contain most of it on site uh, so there's not a lot of trucking off site um again that the, there's an existing parking lot in this area and it's going to be converted into a drop-off um and, and sort of walkway area um with access uh, to a loading dock here. Uh, so there's going to be a reduction in impervious in this area, which is which is good. Going to be a, I'm sorry, just there's going to be a reduction in impervious right now. Because yeah, right. you're taking out part of that parking lot. Yeah, this whole parking lot's here. So it's going to, it's going to kind of be a circle and walk grass in the middle. Yeah, there's, okay. there's green roofs here. There's uh, vegetation here. So overall yeah. in this area, we're going to have a little bit of a, a drop. All right. Thanks. Um, talk a little bit more about the stormwater. So in green here is our stormwater uh, management uh, collection system. Uh, so to talk a little bit about this, give me one second. Um, so we're mitigating our increase in runoff here. We have uh, several ways that we're doing that. Um, we're planning to convey, treat, and enhance it. And then as we kind of discussed here, there's many green um, infrastructure proposed here. You can see sort of the outline of the building here. This is gonna be all green roof in here. Um, all of these areas here that are not gray are, are all green roof um, areas um, in this free. So that, that's a good thing. Um, there's also, as we discussed, geothermal and, uh, and also photovoltaics here on the roof. Um, so this, Existing parking area is going to be repurposed for this turnaround. Um, currently, now there's no treatment there, so we're going to put in a swirl type separators treatment and level spreaders here. So that'll be a, a net uh, positive for that area. Um, the rest of the runoff here is going to we're going to collect it 
and it's going to head downhill to the field. Um, this field here, we're going to put a underground detention system in there that will allow infiltration into the ground. Um, um, so this will be where a lot of mitigation is going to be occurring here. Um, in if the calculations, um, they're going to be reviewed, uh, I believe, by outside uh, 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 engineer, but um, we were able to have some pretty good mitigation here, some pretty significant mitigation uh, of, of the facility. Um, so again, outlets here are going to run to level spreaders and, and punch pools out of this, and we're looking to infiltrate uh, up to the two-year storm. So that takes care of probably 85, 90% of the storms, um, but will still provide a multi-level outlet structure for, for those uh, larger storm events. Uh, that occur on occasion. Um, so the one area we're doing a little wetland fill, um, there's an existing culvert here. This is down by the ice skating rink. Um, this is pretty shallow in here, and there's a actually a detention basin here, and there's a, a field here. Uh, this gets kind of clogged up uh, every once in a while. So what we want to do here, open this up a little bit, put, um, put some new head walls in, Add a add a, a parallel pipe here uh, to allow better flow in this area. Um, basically, the east and west conveyances out of the building, we're grabbing those kind of in a trunk line um, that includes uh, some under drains and some foundation drains, and all that's going to head down to the to the field uh, where that stormwater area is. Um, we looked here at a, a pretty good watershed, about 50 acres uh, of this area is uh, contributing to our drainage system. And we broke that up into three areas. One, uh, the area towards um, uh, Pine Nook, uh, one area to the west here towards uh, Old County, and one uh, sort of to the south here. So these areas are broken up so that we make sure that we meet pre and post at each of these points. Um, so we did look at stormwater flows for the two, the 10 and the 25, as well as the 100. And again, we've, we've showed good mitigation for each of those. Um, what we're trying to illustrate here is, again, the Pecumtuck range. Uh, we were fortunate where our stormwater system is, is down in this lower area here. These are uh, sandier soils, which allow us to infiltrate and recharge. Um, they're not the till and rock soils that are further east here. Uh, so we are fortunate for that. Um, we did receive a DEP file number. Um, there were several comments on here. Um, so we're working now to respond to those. Um, and I believe um, you've also had uh, perhaps a site visit that occurred uh, the other day. So I believe uh, some members of the commission are, are, have a good familiarity with the site. And um, I guess at this time we can open it up to questions and uh, we can certainly drill down into anything uh, in more depth if time warrants. I have a question. Um, yeah, just one second, uh, Ms. Brook, I just got to uh, comment a bit. Yeah, so there'll be uh, a bunch of questions. We did do a site visit yesterday. Um, it was myself, uh, Sean Libby, and Ben Byrne. Um, and so we did walk the site. We do have this um, out now under an RFP for peer review. Uh, Amy, I'm not sure if we, I think we got back a few uh, positive things, but we're, um, it's uh, a lot of the peer reviewer, a lot of consultants are pretty busy right now. Um, so we're trying to get that in place pretty soon. So we will start doing the peer review um, as soon as possible, as well as uh, we need to address the concerns that were brought up by the DEP. So hopefully we can circle all that um, in together as we move forward on, on some of this review. Um, and, you know, um, We'll, we'll take it as it comes, but I know your um, your schedule is such that uh, you want grounds, uh, you don't want shovel in the grounds uh, this summer. Um, so we'll work forward. So I just want to give you the background of where we're at with the uh, RFP for the peer review and um, the DEP comments. And I, I'm sure there'll be others from uh, the 
commission so i have a few um and then our you know going forward so um just want to give you that background and mr rooka you had a question um yeah on the, the picture you, on the picture that you have right there your uh water area there in yellow mm -hmm. the southern to the left corner you see the corner of that field the soccer field there down here no, up a little bit further, right on the corner of the green, closest to your your field, right there. That area, that field, when uh, Joe and I were running the equipment there, we hit a 22-foot deep blue clay ledge that we never found the bottom of. So I'm wondering if you're going to do any test bores on that area up above as far as the percolation rate when you hit that clay. Yes, we have several. Um, we've done, I don't know, 20 borings so far um, up in this region and down here, and we have additional um, proposed here. So yes, yeah. the, the question is yes. So far in this area, um, as, as you saw there, um, I'm gonna switch back to this other. The one that had the here. pink on it. Exactly. And I think, yes, see this area here? Yep. So we're in this we're in this area in the middle here, and that's what we found that silty sand material. The area I think you're talking about is down in this region where that clay is. Well, it was that whole upper corner, yeah. Where if you stand in the soccer field, and the bank shoots hard right up to the side, yep. we're we at went the down five or six feet, and we hit yep. clay all the way to the base. Yep, we are on top of that area, so there's quite a bit of a relief up in there. Right, and we we did borings on it twenty feet or so. It was silty sand to that depth. And then um, there is some shallow to bedrock uh, to the south or to the west of that. I, I, we haven't seen what you've seen yet. I believe that to be further south and west. But again, we have additional borings that we're going to do. So should. Uh, yeah, I think that was that area there was the second bent for Glacial Lake Hitchcock. Yes, I think you're right. And where you're putting the, the, Dining Common is up on the third bench. Yes, I would agree with that. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up to comments from the commissioners right now. Uh, questions. Uh, thank you, Jesse, for the uh, presentation. I'm going to have a couple of comments, but uh, anything from Sean or Ben, uh, Kate? Um. The one question I had, and I regret thinking about it after we had left our site visit, was um, the size and scope of the uh, culvert being in, in, put in place in parallel with the other culvert. And if there are any regulations that we need to be concerned about regarding uh, the addition of a pipe in a wetland. Well, that area is down here. Um, it, the, the, so there's a wetland on either side of it. There's already a culvert there now. The idea is to put one paralleling it so that we can get more effective use of, of the culvert itself. Uh, so there is one there now. I believe it was put in when they put the rink in here. I don't is know it going to be a secondary culvert or a replacement? Yeah, it's basically paralleling it, correct. So it's a secondary one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Okay. That and that's was, because that the channel coming in into it's very field. shallow. And right now I think when it flows a lot, it it um it doesn't it doesn't get through the culvert very well. So we're trying to to mitigate that provide a, a so it's going to increase the flow going through it. Does it back up on the upper side or is it, it does, just going and to it, it will continue to do that? Okay, so we have to look at uh, you know going through the, the wetlands area, there's all sorts of new culvert regulations uh, as sean mentioned there um so that was something that that did jump out to me as well um that we'd want to take a close look on the uh, peer review uh, sure and, but again there is a culvert already here so um so it's existing it's but existing. you're putting in the second one so you're going to increase the head wall size and you're going to increase the the flows and stuff through that area yeah Okay. We're um, not proposing John, to increase the flow necessarily here because we did, like I said, we have a design point to the west, a design point to the south 
west and one to the north and we're not increasing in any of those areas so yeah i saw the uh, the charts and then most of them are negative on, on so yeah. forth but if there was future growth and future increases on that then it would be a you know something sure. to consider i mean that's certainly something the peer reviewer can take a look at but again you yeah. can see over there like the, the depth coming into it's only a you know a few inches and it's mm -hmm. not really effectively getting into where it needs to get in and through so as yeah. part of the project you know we are working in this area so we thought it was smart to um get that area fixed up and again this area goes down to the bottom of the hill where the town where you said did an emergency um, yeah. repair there so that that path has already been um um repaired um yeah the yeah place there, so. further down okay yeah. yeah i just can't tell from this map i'd have to look at the yeah. the next one and uh, again here i just want to point west. out that we do have this hall road the idea is that this is temporary to be used during construction when they're done this is going to come out and uh you know this is if this was grass down here it's going to remain that so um the idea is that this is um to allow um vehicles and equipment to get up here so that it doesn't impact um you know the, the yeah. school up here and allows work to happen you know that you know obviously kids here on this campus and and Wes is on you can tell you that you know between classes there's a lot of walking that occurs here so the idea was to create a safe space here so that the earthwork that has to come from here and come down to here can happen um you know without uh uh, driving up and down pine nook here so yeah and, uh, well you just there was another question i had too when you when you show that you got to bring down the earthwork and, and um increase the elevation of the lower field um and it's probably your plan I, I just overlooked it but what is the how, how much you're going to stockpile at any given point and how you're going to uh, manage that stockpile as well as well as sitting there I don't yeah, believe you're going so, to bring it all down and level it, elevate it out. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have quite a. It's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, yards of material that's coming. It down is. It is. So yeah. one thing we're proposing here along this edge is the, a new retaining wall. Yeah. Um, and we're we're going to have to have some temporary setting basins here, and this wall is going to have to be put in so that they can start bringing the backfill in here, and then the stormwater chambers and kind of work around it. So you are correct. Uh, there will be several phases there. Um, you know, there will be um, erosion and sedimentation control in these areas. Um, Just on that, that western side. Along that western side. Yeah, and yeah. we're actually going to be able, we're going to create and build a, a retaining wall here. So that's going to be an additional barrier uh, yeah. there as well. So we're going to have to build that in order to backfill against it and raise that up in lifts, right? Yeah. And then I, I just going to be curious to see what the, um, and maybe it's in there, but the the plans are on the discharge areas for coming out on that west side because it, it does drop off pretty significantly. You can see some. Well, yes. you can see the uh, the the roots in here on your on your uh, the blue yep. there. So, I mean, that's all yep. covered out. So. These areas here, if you walk them, are really steep. Yeah. Um, we try there, so there's an area in here that is not as steep. It's a flatter area, and that's kind of where we came out. It's also outside the 50 foot. So provides uh, that that 50 feet or more of vegetated um, mm -hmm. filter. Um, so that's obviously better uh, than some of the existing uh, ones that would come straight into it. So we think we've yeah. done a pretty good job. The other one here, again, is you know we're also we're able to outlet you know over a hundred feet away to really take. Uh, advantage of that natural buffer so and will that will all the existing pipes is going to there's three or four four or five that pop out of the hill will they all be removed yeah the, these ones that are in here are going to be removed yeah. mm -hmm. um, um there are some in other regions that are we're not touching that will stay but there will be a net benefit here we're going to be removed because all the drainage from these fields now just pops out on the hill here so yeah. that's going to be consolidated we're actually going to take um, so the new field here is going to be a sand-based athletic field. It's going to have under drains. And those under drains, instead of just discharging, we're actually putting them into our basin. So we're going to try to get that infiltration. Um, and then, if, you know, and then from that, uh, 
discharge. So there'll be a net, I think there'll be a net benefit there. Okay. Yeah, and it's relative to the stormwater plan, looking at it, and um, in in Deerfield, we usually it's the planning board, but in this case, it, it'll be under us. I've been looking at it, and you know, some of your BMPs are are pretty interesting to look at, and and um, the design. So it'll be interesting to get into that and to to some more details when we could do the um, the peer engineering review. Sure. Yep. We look um, forward to that. And uh, yeah. Second set eyes is is always is always good. Like I said, they're they're uh, making a, a real a real investment here into this stormwater system. Um, again, most of their other stuff's up gradient, um, so this is sort of uh, um, you know they're definitely putting an investment in here to deal with this drainage, and it's actually we have some room for for future growth in here. So we did think of that. Um, they're putting quite a bit of uh, resources into the field. Um, so we try to um, be smart about this system here uh, to provide some from future growth. Yeah, I was actually just trying to look at the, uh, the charts. A lot of it was uh, negative change, which which we asked yesterday. It's like, it looked like uh, you're either ahead or, or you're going to do something down the road. So it's interesting that there may be some more future growth that's coming in there. So planning ahead yep. um, on we're, that we're, aspect. We're definitely trying to do that, and like I said, we've we've had we've made some significant headway here in in reducing the runoff in this direction, even with that uh, future growth built in. So yeah, uh, that was the idea. Um, we're sensitive to that. Um, Wes lives in town. A couple of our other engineers live in town, so um, we're definitely sensitive and familiar with the area. So we're trying our best here to. Uh, uh, to do do right by the mitigation here. Yeah. Question, okay. Um, okay. Uh, go ahead, Miss Rika. Um, the lower right corner of your haul road, you've got it going right up the uh, the grade there. They've cut. Is that where the road is going to be? And if so, why did they cut down all the oak trees just off the picture? I, I'm not familiar with that, uh, Jonathan. I don't know that. Maybe someone else on the call is familiar you see with that. that white box there in that in the parking lot, right here. There's a fence right along there, and there's yep. that opening. And at the other end of the fence, to the right side, is where they cut down. I don't know, fifteen or twenty oak trees, figuring yeah. that they were going to run the road straight across the field. Hey, John. It's Wes with Eagle Brook. Um, <laughs> How you doing? Um, yeah, and those trees were, uh, it, it, it was closer to six or seven trees that were taken down recently. Some of them had some storm damage. That's where a lot of our maintenance guys park their vehicles right there. Um, and we had some damage, as you know, you see them every day. So um, it was really just a, 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 you know, preventative issue to any more damage to vehicles that are parked there. Right. The only yeah. question they had is if you're going to go straight across the field where they cut the trees down, which was the impression that I got from the guys up there, you're going to have to do something about soil remediation on the ditch. Yeah, no, we're, we're not going to be going right across there. We're actually going to be coming across the parking lot uh, further to the north and coming out in between where lower up ball field and, up ball, and upper up ball field is. There's sort of a grade change there. Yeah. right where there's an opening to the fence line now and we're just going to run parallel in, right in between the two fields so not not cut across the field okay, okay. that's going to screw Thanks up your drainage from the upper field if you're looking up the hill you got the, the the low field and then the upper field and then it's got the swale going through to the field over near the skating rink they put it they put some serious irrigation right along that and drainage right along that where the, with the, the elevation changes. I don't know if you remember that. Right. You got it on your plans. Yeah, I do, I do know there is some, uh, some, some drainage tiles going through there, but we should be able to avoid that. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to improve any sort of um, field drainage from, from one to the other. Is yeah, the idea that we're going to be able to make some improvements along the way. All right. Here's a living here. Right. I remember when they built it. 
All right. <clears throat> Just go back for the couple points. Um, Amy, do you, can you tell us where the status of the peer view, peer view, <laughs> my allergies is killing me. <laughs> peer review RFP stand up at, the, at this point, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I think we have a viable proposal from um, Sarah Campbell, uh, but we would still need someone to um, do the wetland um, delineation or walk the wetland line. Um, so I've sent out several, um, both Emily Stockman and uh, Kate Bednaz um, are unavailable. So I've sent out several more proposals to other wetland uh, scientists um, who have expressed interest and I'm just waiting for those uh, to come in. So I think, okay. um, yeah, if um, the applicant is agreeable, maybe we can go ahead and uh, contract with uh, Sarah Campbell. All right, uh, so that, that process is in place. Yep. Um, and that's also noted that there's quite a number of uh, certificates, certificates of compliance for previous projects that have to be, uh, be cleaned up for, I, don't, I know Tom's working on and, uh, and others. So I think we're making progress there. Um, any other comments from the applicant site? Um, I, I think we're um, said what we were going to say and, um, you know, got a good overview in. Again, we're going to work on those uh, DP comments. Um, we, I think we're, um, we're definitely eager to have you kick off Sarah Campbell there, um, you know, so we can get her comments, maybe possibly talk with her in between the meetings and work out any issues that may come up um, so that we can, um, you know, have it addressed for next meeting if possible. Um, if that's okay, uh, we can certainly keep uh, you guys in the loop via email, but um, that's something that's worked well in the past, um, if you guys are amenable to that. As far as the, the wetland review, um, I would say, you know, really, you know, any qualified person that you guys can get a hold of there, I'm certainly, uh, I don't think that the applicant would have any, any issue with uh, if something comes in next week there to, to kick them off as well. And uh, I'm certain, um, you know, our consultants would be happy to meet with them and and uh, walk through uh, the site because it is a really big site. We can kind of narrow in on some of the areas uh, with them uh, and help them out because, uh, like you said, it is a really big site. Um, you know, the project's been going on for quite a bit, bit of time here, so we can certainly zero help them uh, get to the appropriate locations and in some of those critical areas so that they can uh, they can they can review okay. it efficiently <clears throat> yeah we'll continue working on that um any other comments from the commissioners <coughs> any other comments from the public all right thank you all it's a um, great presentation great discussion um i throw up the um to continue the meeting to the next meeting of the commission. So take a motion on that. I can make a stab at it. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the, do you say continue the discussion or just continue the meeting? The hearing. The, the hearing. hearing. Continue, yeah. continue the public hearing on the notice of intent filed by West Smith of Eagle Brook School for construction of a new dining hall, including the construction of new sidewalks, reconstruction of a portion of a parking lot to a cul-de-sac, access drive, site grading, and construction of a subsurface stormwater infiltration system on property identified in the assessor's records as map 62, lots 13 and 14, map 68, lots five and six, and map 69, lots 52 and 58. And so, continue, uh, do I have a, hear a second? 
Ben Byrne, I'll second. Okay. Um, any further comments for the uh, commissioners? And then, okay, let's uh, take a roll call vote about uh, continuing the hearing to our next uh, meeting, which would be with Andrew Erpel. So uh, take a roll call, um, Sean Levy. Aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Berman. Ben Burn. Ben aye. Pete Law, aye. So we will take us. Uh, take it back up and next month and do a lot of work uh, in, in between. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sounds good. Okay. Do we know when that next meeting date is? Is it uh, 24th, um, 27th? Is it uh, 7th? 7th? Yes. 27th. 27th. Yep. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to take a brief break. I have to go get a bottle of water <laughs> and something. I'm right back. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. My allergies are breaking up these days. Um, so we're going to open up the hearing because um, consider the notice of intent filed by, by Ken Buchlin as Sunny Days Cannabis Inc. for construction of cannabis, cannabis cultivation campus including three buildings, access drives, parking utilities, and a drainage system on property at Zero Creed Film Road, identifying the assessor's <coughs> records uh, as BAP 159, Lot 14. So the hearing is open, and <coughs> excuse me, somebody uh, want to do a presentation for us? Uh... Okay, John. Okay. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is John Furman. I'm the <laughs> office manager for VHB in Springfield, and I'm also the design engineer, engineer of record for the project. With me tonight is uh, David Picard from Ecological Resource uh, Consultants. He is our wetland specialist, and he prepared the NOI. Uh, I also see on the, the call here Chris Chamberlain, and I believe Lucy is here from Berkshire Design. They are uh, the peer reviewers for the project. We've been working with them both on the notice of intent review and on the planning board side. So what I'd like to do is give a brief overview of the project uh, from a, a non-wetlands perspective, where we are permitting wise, turn it over to David, who can kind of talk about the, uh, the, the, the science to the, to the project. And then I'll follow up with a discussion on the stormwater management system, where we are with that, and then answer any questions that uh, that you all might have, if that works for you. Yeah, sounds good. Please uh, right. proceed. All right, let me share my screen and I'll throw some plans up here and uh, we'll start with that. Uh, so we have a full uh, set of site plans that uh, have, were submitted as part of the NOI. I'm going to talk mostly from my presentation to the overall plan because it basically shows uh, everything for the site at once, uh, and I'll zoom up uh, on this. Uh, also, I want to uh, uh, just mention before I get going on this that, that Ken Boquillen was on the call when we first started. He's actually in Atlanta. And uh, he had some technical issues uh, with his computer. So he called me and he had a drop off. So uh, he apologizes for not being present. He was here until technology started fighting him. And then he, he left. 
Um, okay, so uh, the the site itself, we have 28 acres of of land. The 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 main proper the main project is basically on one parcel, and uh, lot 14, I believe, is the other one, which is to the north, is really remaining um, uh, untouched. We're not we're not uh, touching it. Uh, if I go to the survey for one second, uh, this color graphics that's on the uh, the cover sheet actually shows kind of like the configuration of the, the wetlands within the site. The wetlands were delineated and ORAD was uh, prepared and accepted by the commission or earlier or later uh, last year. And I believe we had a site walk uh, already uh, as part of that process. Uh, so the site is wooded. There's no development on it uh, currently. Um, and uh, what we are proposing is a cannabis campus. Uh, our driveway is dictated by Mass DOT. There's this is a, our authorized break in access, so we can't locate this driveway anywhere else but where it's located right now. Uh, this elevated area in here is a former rail bed, and I believe there's a, a an abutment here. There's a bridge that used to be here, but that we're we're basically coming in. Um, into the site, we're filling these areas, and then we get into the main main campus. Uh, starting uh, to the south, we're proposing a testing building of about 5,000 square feet. Uh, we have a dispensary building of about 3,300 square feet, uh, and then the the development has a second wetland crossing, <clears throat> which leads us to the center area uh, and the cultivation building building of about 26,000 uh, square feet. Uh, from a permitting perspective, uh, we are currently in uh, the planning board review. I believe we've had uh, three meetings right now, Chris, if that is correct. Or um, we have we have some comments uh, from the peer reviewer right now, and uh, we are working on some revisions and updating of the stormwater model. So the so we will have some revisions. Uh, to the stormwater model. Um, it's very advantageous that Berkshire Design is also reviewing this for the Conservation Commission. So one peer reviewer, it's a very efficient um, way to make sure that there's no um, uh, cross-linking of comments and everything is, is direct and, and um, uh, through with one reviewer. Uh, so we are in the, in the process for the planning board. Uh, we have filed uh, three permits with Mass DOT. Uh, this site is basically kind of located in an area where there are no utilities. So the first uh, permit we have is to extend a water line uh, down uh, five and 10 from the south. We're basically connecting at the fire station, boring and jacking under uh, five and 10 and coming up along the roadway uh, on the edge um, and then into the site. Uh, the second mass DOT permit is actually to permit this access where it is uh, located. And the third mass DOT permit is to connect the, um, the, the sewage uh, ejection system into the sewer line that currently exists in, um, in five and 10. So those, pro those permits are all uh, underway. Uh, and of course, we are in the Conservation Commission process with this being our first meeting. That's really a general overview of the of the project itself. Uh, I'd like to just turn it over to David so he can kind of talk about how we situated things and and um, where we're going from here. David. David. It's David and mute. I can't see. There he is. Sorry. Okay. There he is. Okay, John, could you stop sharing your screen? I certainly can. And I'll share mine in a second. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Hello. So, uh, for the record, I'm Dave Pickard. I'm the owner and principal scientist for Ecological Resource Consultants. Uh, I've been 
working in this capacity for about seven years now. Um, most of my projects I work on are in the Western region. Uh, this is the first one I believe I've worked on in Deerfield. Um, I also have a other job, which is I am the conservation agent for the town of Northbridge over a lot east of you guys in the Blackstone River Valley. So uh, I've, I've seen things from both sides, so to speak. <laughs> um, so we're here tonight for the Cannabis Cultivation Campus. John gave you a pretty good overview of where it's located and what it consists of. And I'm going to hone in on why it requires an NOI. So the resource areas we have on this property include land under waterways, which is a perennial tributary to Bloody Brook, I believe is the local name. And that comes into the site, people see my hand here, and then extends uh, southwestward and goes off the property. Um, there are also banks that can find that the, the land underwater. And then there are bordering vegetated wetlands, which are shaded in the kind of olive green color. And lastly, we have riverfront area associated with the perennial tributary. And the limit of that is shown by these thin blue lines. This is the 100 foot. And this is the 200 foot. We did get some DEP comments and we are in the proce process of responding to those and, and addressing them. One of the comments was, was that this brook actually goes off in this direction. That is correct. The riverfront area of the 200 now encroaches slightly into the property project area here where the main access road is going to be constructed. Um, so with respect to, we have two BVW crossings located here and the limit of alteration is shown in the red hatched areas and the second one here. Uh, collectively, those will alter about 3,550 square feet of BBW. And based on the ORAD there, these crossings will occur where there are not uh, bank and land under waterways. We also have work in riverfront area. Uh, the majority of it is for uh, stormwater management and uh, a little bit of the parking for the, uh, the building located here and the riverfront area impacts are shaded. And with that information we received from DEP, we have some impacts here as well. Um, with the update, we now have uh, 9,000 square feet of work in riverfront area associated with this project. So that's located here, here, and then to bring the water line in, it's basically located in this thin strip adjacent to routes five and 10. One of the things we have to do for a project of this magnitude, because it wasn't already developed, uh, and because of the type of use and how long it's been under the applicant's ownership is, is due an alternatives analysis. And that was included in the uh, notice of intent um tempted to document that when you consider uh amount of work in riverfront and potential for work in other resource areas both wetlands rare species prime forest biomap core habitat things along that line uh 
this site is the best suited. That analysis also considers that the proposed use has to have some factors to make it economically viable, and that's allowed in the alternatives analysis process. For economically viable, the factors that were considered were uh, along a major roadway, close proximity to a uh, interchange, because you know the intent is for this facility to draw from from other communities, uh, and a variety of other factors. Uh, in DEP comment, they said that, well, you have to consider every other parcel in the town. And normally that's true, but what wasn't stated in that comment was you have to consider whether they're, uh, excuse me, appropriately zoned cannabis facilities uh, are allowed in certain areas. I understand there's a very small overlay for cannabis in Deerfield, and I haven't had time to go through it yet, but I think it's going to come out that this is the only site that can accomplish this unless all the work is in Riverfront area or all the work's going to require major alterations of wetlands and other important ecological resources. The project is also entails work in buffer zone. The limit of buffer zone is shown by these thin olive green lines uh, as presented in the notice of intent. Uh, we have 3.2 acres worth of work in buffer zone. I know that DEP raised concerns about that. So I looked at it uh, in more detail. And what this graphic shows is the amount of buffer zone just within this component of the site uh, that isn't being disturbed. And it actually comes out to 3.2 acres. Um, there may be a subsequent phase to this. I don't want to kind of uh, call out how much work it buffers out over the entire site, but it's it's going to be much higher. Um, you know, DEP had concerns about how close some of the work was. Uh, certainly, some is close, but as this graphic shows, you know, buffers are being maintained around the limits of development uh, between the extent of work and the bordering vegetative wetlands. And D, uh, DEP raised something about thermal impacts, which we'll look into. Um, so the two crossings qualify as limited pro project crossings, which means uh, you can exceed some of the standards required normally for work in BBW. Um, you also have to look at alternatives to support that um, limited project criteria. And as John said, this is the only allowable access to this property from routes five and 10. So this crossing itself can't be located in other areas. Honestly, if you push it this way, there probably be more BBW uh, impacts and if you push it this way there'll be more work in river frontier the second crossing is actually designed to occur at the narrowest point of the bbw uh, that separates the western half of the project from the southeastern aspect of the project um, to compensate for the BBW impacts, uh, we are proposing to put in a replacement wetland 
located in close proximity to the first crossing, which is here. Uh, the replacement area was designed based on personal experience, uh, looking at hundreds of these over time to see how they do, uh, being involved in the construction of some of them and constantly going to continuing education on the most recent aspects and the most uh, recent knowledge we know about how to create these and ensure they uh, succeed. So the, the replacement area, and this is just the floor in the tan color, uh, is going to be about 4,760 square feet, and that is uh, 1.3 more than is being impact, which was the 3,500. 50. The floor will have micro topographic features. There'll be clumps of plantings that include species that occur uh, in the surrounding wetlands. Um, I did go out and do some test borings in here uh, to determine that, you know, the proposed floor elevation will uh, basically mimic what's happening in the adjacent BVW. Um, there are provisions to modify this if during the course of construction, you know, we find that there was something unexpected like a clay layer, or I don't think there's any rock in this area, but uh, on the off chance we have one uh, that will be looked into. And then there are extension, extensive provisions for oversight during planting, putting in wildlife habitat features, as well as doing at least two years of monitoring. And the monitoring would be twice each year, late spring, early fall. Uh, and the reports of those would be provided to you folks. So there's a, another comment raised by the DEP about whether this project complies with the Massachusetts programmatic general permit that has been developed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the concern was that crossings require at least one culvert every 50 feet. Both of these crossings are less than, than 50 feet wide to or 50 feet long to start with and they both incorporate culverts. Um, we'll look at the size of those. I need to reach out to the Army Corps to get uh, some additional clarification on that. Um, we could potentially modify the culvert sizes or if need be, uh, we'd be elevated into uh, what's called a um, notification required scenario where this application would go to the Army Corps and they would confirm whether it complies with, it can be allowed as a program, programmatic general permit or uh, requires an individual permit. Um, right now, aside from the culvert issue, um, it would only require what's called self verification, uh, which is basically a form that the uh, wetland scientist fills out and provides to the core, just basically checking through a lot of items and says, yes, this complies, this complies, this complies. Uh, so that's a brief overview. I'm sure you have many questions, like I said, uh, and John said, we're going to have some revisions as well as formal responses to comments, which will go to you folks and DEP, and uh, we'll move on from there. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's okay with the chair, what I'd like to do is just uh, bring back up our site plan and kind of go through the stormwater uh, very briefly so you have an idea of what we're doing there. Yeah, that'd be fine. Thanks. All right. All right. Uh, as I had uh, mentioned at the beginning of uh, of the presentation, we are uh, 
uh, in the process of of uh, working on uh, comments that we have received from uh, Berkshire Design Group. Um, the 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 comments we received were basically um, fine tuning of the stormwater model and uh, addressing a difference. Excuse me. Uh, differences in, in how we uh, analyze uh, certain portions of it. Uh, we have an engineer who has been working on that. Uh, we have not responded back fully to uh, Berkshire Design yet, but uh, we intend to do so within the next uh, few days. Uh, in general, uh, the site is a complicated site in order to uh, construct a stormwater management system. Uh, the soils are relatively poor. There are uh, record soil uh, information that shows there's some areas that might be suitable for infiltration. Um, when we came, uh, uh, were invited into the project by uh, Sunny Days, they had already performed uh, soil borings for the borings. And uh, I believe it was uh, tough for them to get permitting permits to cross the wetlands and get into here. So we have not had the opportunity to do uh, a lot of soil borings. Based on what we saw, the, 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 the soils generally uh, have a fairly high groundwater, anywhere from uh, two and a half to three feet. And the soils below that, uh, in general, are a, a silty, sandy material or a, a clay material, uh, aside from the one or two areas where there, there may be some, some sands. So all of the detention basins that we have designed were intended to be surface basins. So rather than dig them into the ground, we've uh, basically scooped off some of the topsoil. They're, very, they're fairly shallow and we're bringing in fill in the areas where the developments are to create the, the depressions. Uh, our intention would be uh, to line these basins uh, so that uh, we did not have to uh, worry about the clearance between uh, the bottom of the basin and the groundwater elevation uh, being any uh, any less than, than two feet. Uh, but we do need to confirm that through additional testing. There are eight uh, detention basins um, in no particular order. I believe this is one, uh, 1A and 1B. Uh, Chris, this has been updated from the ones that you had on the planning board. Um, this is two, and this is receiving mostly um, roof water with some parking area water. Uh, three is here. This is 4A and 4B. And then I believe we go five, six, and seven. Um, the challenge to these uh, sites is so, and, and, and this one is a, is a prime example of it, is that once you fill the site and you get to the bottom of the basin where you want to have your outlet, the nearest elevation on the site that is low enough to have an outlet is way over here. So we're basically taking the pipe and we're running it along the, uh, the, the back of the building to an elevation that's lower than the bottom of the basin so that it, the, it can outlet. And that situation occurs frequently in a, in a couple areas. This basin here in particular, water uh, enters this basin. We have culverts going under the proposed roadway because we needed capacity. So we basically have another basin here. And then the outlet is over here because the elevation on this side of the roadway is higher than this side. Um, so the intention uh, for the design is when we, when we, um, when we looked at the, uh, uh, the, the entire uh, site, uh, I just want to show you the uh, existing and proposed stormwater model. So uh, we've had some discussion with Berkshire Design on this as well. Uh, typically on a site, if the site has areas which you are not uh, touching, you really don't analyze them. And this site is, is classic for that. You have these wetland fingers that kind of come out. We have these areas here where we're not touching them. So these areas are basically the same between existing and proposed. This area here, uh, I'm sorry, this area here, there's a portion of it that's remaining the same. Um, so we have to alter the, the time of concentrations and the, the composition of these uh, so that they um, accurately reflect what's happening and an increase in, in uh, pervious area versus, or increase in 
impervious areas over the pervious areas that's there. Those are generally some of the comments and discussions we've had with Berkshire Design is fine tuning that. The way that we have it modeled, um, it, it looks like uh, we might have some double counting in here unintentionally. So we're going back and we're we're looking at those to make sure that the time of concentration, uh, which is the time for a raindrop to hit the furthest most part of a drainage area and fall its way all the way through to a design point, um, we want to make sure we don't have any double counting on that. So that's some of the uh, the work that we're we're performing right now. Um, the other reason that we wanted to uh, make sure that we in included the entire site is because early on we had to obtain a special permit from the uh, ZBA uh, for the project. I, I believe it was a ZBA. Um, and uh, during that process, uh, one of the abutters on the other side of 116 commented how they've got water uh, concerns on their property as well. So we wanted to analyze the entire site, not to hide any results or to, to skew any results, but we wanted to see under existing conditions what was happening at the point where the stream or the brook leaves our property, then analyze it there after the fact so that we could see exactly what our, our, our impact was and, and, and to be able to, to provide a, a, a direct answer to what the site uh, is doing. So you can see under the proposed model, we have a lot more red. Uh, the site is broken up into uh, uh, many more uh, drainage uh, subcatchments, but you can see the ones I talked about in this area here really remain uh, unchanged. So, um, so what we've done is uh, created the stormwater model, uh, which we are uh, working to, to update to address comments. These are up, up out of date because we are working on it, but I wanna to represent to you what we currently have, which these will be changing. Um, so at that design point 3000, where the water leaves the site, we have an existing flow of 3.3 cubic feet per second for the two year storm. Then you can see the results for the 10, the 25 and the 100. Um, the detention basins, other than the two year storm, which has a 10th of a cubic foot per second increase, all the other ones are, are relatively lower. Uh, these numbers will change as we update our stormwater model and work with Berkshire Design so that both, both uh, businesses and both firms are, are happy with the, the results. But in general, these are the results that we're, we're looking for. What we're looking for is to make sure that our proposed model has less flow at that design point than the existing model. We certainly, uh, and that's one of the, the, the standard standards too uh, for the DEP uh, peak uh, flow rate attenuation under the storm so that we don't have downstream flooding. So that's our goal for this. We will continue to work and modify that. Um, I'm anticipating that once uh, my engineer gets through uh, addressing some of the comments, we'll host another conference call with uh, Chris and Lucy from Berkshire Design. We'll, we'll uh, look at the results. Planning board is looking for these results as well. So uh, as I said before, it's advantageous that uh, we have Berkshire Design for both uh, commissions. So they're very consistent reviews. Uh, but the, in general, that is uh, that is the, <clears throat> the stormwater, <laughs> excuse me, stormwater management process. And I, <clears throat> I know that we received a peer review memo from uh, Berkshire Design as well. <clears throat> Uh, on the Conservation Commission process, we have not uh, had an opportunity to look at that yet, but uh, we will do so in conjunction with the DEP comments that we uh, we receive. I'm sorry, guys. I had to just had to go get some more water. This, <laughs> this stuff is killing me. My allergies are it's only gonna special. Get worse. <laughs> yeah, well, the trees are out, and that's what my problem is. So, um, but I appreciate all the uh, information. And if I have trouble talking, I just have to have to take another break here. Um, so, when do you? And I'm sorry, but when do you expect to have some revised numbers from your stormwater models and such? 
Uh, we're working on it now. We've been working on it for most of this week. Um, the planning board deadline for updated information is this coming Tuesday, but that will not give Berkshire Design any time to review it. So what I'm anticipating is that this week we would submit what we can to the planning board. Uh, we would then submit that our, our model to uh, uh, to Berkshire, give them an opportunity to look at it. I would say, you know, not putting uh, words in their mouth, but they probably need a week or so. It's not an easy model to understand. It's it's pretty complicated. Uh, yeah. I would expect that maybe the second week in April, we might be able to have a call if, uh, with these guys, <clears throat> see what what they think of the results and the updated uh, analysis, and then uh, go from there. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is <clears throat> complicated. Complicated one. And I was looking at the... Uh, the letter from Berkshire Design and some of the comments, and um, there are some other things to to be addressed in some of those uh, areas as well. Um, consideration of some of the country drainage, um, green roofs, um, more test pits, uh, other other things like that. But where do we sit on some of that? Uh, maybe if someone, Chris, for someone from Berkshire Design can. Kind of guess uh, a little bit of a scheduler. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Chris Chamberlain, I'm a principal civil engineer with Berkshire Design, and uh, we have been contracted by the town on behalf of the town to do a peer review of this project. And we've been uh, looking at the plans and drainage report and notice of intent for for a little while now. As as John mentioned, we've had some back and forth. Um, we submitted a letter to the Conservation Commission, I think, uh, either early this week or, or late last week, uh, yeah. with some NOI comments. Uh, we had previously submitted a letter to the Planning Board, which focused a lot on the stormwater system, and knowing that we were getting revised submission on that, we sort of left that, left those couple of pages off um, from the Conservation Commission letter, figuring that that a lot of that could change um, in the okay. in the coming weeks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of process, um, totally agree with everything that John says. Um, if we're getting our revised stuff in the next few days, then, yeah, I, I think a, a week or so is a reasonable out of, amount of time to digest um, that complicated modeling and then uh, get back with them if there are additional questions. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly uh, what you'd like to do. I mean, I'm happy to give a general overview or discuss any questions related to our specific comments um, or, you know, highlight critical issues or, or whatnot. Um, but I don't well, want to- I think, Chris, <laughs> um, knowing that there, we has still have a lot more answers to come, but maybe uh, an overview of what you think is critical, what, you know, what you're really taking a look at for our- mm -hmm. <clears throat> For our knowledge tonight, and we have to have to extend this uh, to the next meetings and so forth. But if you can kind of give us some kind of oversight, that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess um, I would start with just sort of uh, chronologically from our review standpoint, uh, starting with the the stormwater. Um, you know, John is, if anything, understating that it's a very complicated model. Um, I said to him that I don't envy his job trying to uh, uh, design the stormwater for this complicated site. Um, we highlighted uh, some issues related to a few of the stormwater standards that I think are most relevant to the Conservation Commission. Um, and uh, those would be uh, standard number one, which is uh, the issue of uh, treated, uh, is of discharges being uh, releasing treated stormwater in a way such that erosion won't be created. Um, you know, all of the outlets that we have, well, um, you know, I think David did mention that that there is some vegetated buffer left around the BVW. Um, in the specific case of a lot of the stormwater outlets, we're coming really right up to the edge of the BVW. Um, so there uh, were some concerns about uh, demonstrating that the release of that water would not create erosion um, in terms of quantification. Their stormwater standards have some uh, guidelines as to how to demonstrate that being the case. 
Um, and then along those lines, one of the DEP comments was that one of those outlets um, from the stormwater basin right near the main entry is actually into the BVW, uh, which is not allowed. Uh, I can see why it was done because there's already some riprap protection there for the culverts, um, but strictly speaking, uh, that outlet's supposed to be pulled back from it. So there's a little uh, to look at there. Um, then standard number two, which is really what that, that large model is mostly about, uh, about peak flow attenuation. Um, so there's some technical things that I won't belabor uh, about uh, different uh, uh, ways of modeling a couple of things um, and uh, some, some talk among the engineers about the best, most accurate way to model the site. Setting those aside, um, I think for the Conservation Commission, you know, one critical issue under that uh, standard number two is that um, based on the, the numbers published in the stormwater report, uh, the project is balancing the runoff rates from the site with, with that small exception in the two-year storm, which, which may or may not be acceptable. Um, but what wasn't clear to us was um, at each of those discharges into the BVW, uh, whether that attenuation was being achieved. Um, and you know, so, so we have sections of wetland within the site uh, where the pre and post isn't necessarily clearly quantified. And so there could be uh, a situation where there's a significant increase in runoff to that internal BBW, uh, which in my interpretation wouldn't satisfy uh, standard two if that were the case. Um, and then, you know, the, the uh, standard um, uh, standard four regarding the water quality was also a, a big one for us. Um, the stormwater report is classifying the detention basins, or it's naming the detention basins as wet basins, um, but based on the stormwater standards for a wet basin, uh, those include a permanent pool of water. Uh, these, these are actually designed more as dry detention basins, which don't have the same amount of water quality treatment. Uh, so, so based on the current design, uh, it was our opinion that they were not meeting the water quality standard and, and needed to add uh, additional stormwater treatment. John and I talked about that. He already had some thoughts as, as to how that might be improved. So, so there could be um, some changes uh, to address that. Um, and then um, the other one, which, which we focused a little bit more on in the Conservation Commission uh, comments is on the erosion control plan. Um, and there's a couple of aspects of that that, that we think are critical. You know, the, the first one would be um, for them to clarify whether there's phasing to this project, because um, as the, the plans are showing right now, theoretically, the contractor could come and strip the whole site on day one, uh, which is typically not the kind of practice that you want to see on a very large site. Uh, so clarification on whether there's going to be phasing. Um, and then, well, there are good uh, perimeter controls around the site. Um, it is a large site that is going to see large amounts of runoff in other places, um, and it wasn't clear uh, whether there are provisions for things like uh, sediment settling basins, um, stock specific stockpile areas that are uh, protected to prevent erosion, um, and other things. You know, I think um, uh, certainly as the sites get larger and as they get closer to the uh, resource areas, um, those those are things that we we want to look at carefully. Um, and then uh, just sort of from the general NOI review, you know, I think uh, one piece on the alternatives analysis, uh, and this applies, you know, potentially to the crossing, but also to the riverfront area, um, it does, you know, in my interpretation of the regulations, there is a clear requirement. Oh, well, I, I agree with David that Technically, there's a requirement to look at all properties. You know, there's a, there's a practical reality to that. But one thing that that is really clear is that other land owned by the applicant needs to be considered in an alternatives analysis. And what is missing from the submission, in, in our view, is a, a look at that adjacent parcel to the north. Um, and whether uh, moving any of the development in that direction has the potential to reduce uh, impacts both to the resource areas um, and to the buffer zones. For all I know, that that won't help, um, but it's uh, it's not clear um, in in any of the submissions as to whether that was looked at and whether that's a possibility uh, to reduce some of this. Um, 
And yeah, and I think uh, just uh, listening in on the conversation, I think that, you know, the this gets a little bit into to more of a subjective land, and that's going to be for the for the commission to think over. Um, but I think the DEP comment about the buffer impacts uh, is is just broadly saying that, you know, on this site where there is uh, uh, currently a totally undisturbed and forested site where now there's going to be clearing uh, in some cases right up to the edge of the BBW, um, you know, in other cases with uh, a relatively modest uh, remaining offset between the developed work and the, um, the BBW, uh, because of that level of change, there is the potential, you know, a higher potential for the work to have a detrimental effect on the resource area um, and that the burden is on the applicant to sort of uh, take a look at, you know, those potential impacts and how they're being mitigated or minimized. I think David said they're, they're planning to look at the thermal, which is good because I think you know, to me, uh, they have pushed the the stormwater features, which are the sort of greener features, toward the edge. Uh, but that does emphasize the fact that that there's uh, you know essentially no buffer between where the stormwater is being released uh, and the BVW. So so taking a good hard look at um, whether those discharges are potentially going to be uh, creating a detrimental effect to the values that that the resource areas are having is is important. Um, And yeah, I think uh, again, knowing that that there are um, uh, revisions coming, um, I, you know, I'm certainly happy to go through some of our comments point by point. But that that may or may not be um, productive at this point. If there are going to be uh, responses that that may resolve some of them. Yeah, that was my thinking as well. But thank you for that overview. That's very helpful. Um, any other comments from the applicant or from? Peer review. No. Any other comments from the commissioners? Seen done. Well, I would suggest that we would take a motion to um, continue this hearing to the next scheduled meeting, which I think I just said was the 27th of uh, right. April. And hopefully by mid April or a bit before the next meeting, we have some more materials, some more answers to all the uh, questions out there. But uh, this is very helpful to to get started with. I I think uh, just uh, kind of a summary. I think we will because the uh, planning board hearing is in advance of your guys. Yeah, by about two weeks. So, uh, you know, what we plan to do is as we address their comments which are, are consistent for both uh, both commissions and the, that board. Uh, Berkshire will be included in all of those. So I think the at some point, the two processes are going to come together. And I think having this as our first meeting and then being on our third meeting, I think it was, uh, for the planning board, uh, we're able to kind of uh, bring these together so you both end up with the same plan set, same documents, everything else. So Yeah, that'd be helpful. John or... Chris, do you know where the planning board, did they do a special meeting next Monday or they're going to wait till the following Monday? Uh, uh, it's just a regular I, meeting. Just a regular meeting. I don't think it's Re regular. Special. Okay. Yeah. On the last um, meeting, there was questions about it. So. Yeah, the, the planning board is meeting on the 27th, but that's to talk about bylaws. Their regular meeting is on. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah, that. I think it's April 3rd. Yeah, April third. Yep. Okay, yep. great. All right. Um, any other comments? Otherwise, I take a motion to um, continue. No uh, comments. I can, uh, I can. I would move to continue the public hearing on the notice of intent filed by Ken Bukin of Sunny Days Cannabis Inc. for a um, cannabis cultivation campus to the next scheduled hearing on March 23rd. Okay, do you have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion's on the table. Um, anybody comments from the commissioners? Oh, 
before we had John, go ahead. Was it the, the meeting the 23rd or the 27th? 27th, was it mis misstated? I was, sorry. Okay. 20, let me just check, 27th. Okay, thank you. So we can uh, amend that motion to reflect uh, April 27th at 7 p.m. Okay. So do I have a roll call to accept? Sean Libby? Aye. Uh, Kate Devlin? Aye. Uh, ben Byrne? Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law? Aye. So it passes and we'll take it up again in a few weeks. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And Even. apologize for my, <laughs> I got <laughs> lozenges, I got water. I'm trying to get my voice back we, here. We just thought it was an emotional project and you're getting all choked up over <laughs> it. <stuff. laughs> that is it, it's right on, John. That's it. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah, good night. thank you. All right. <clears throat> all right. Sorry, guys. Boy, that really hit me. My throat is about as dry as a... <clears> throat> the desert sand. All right, just a couple more things. Uh, general discussion, special order of, of conditions that we talked about the document last time. Uh, I think Amy is formatting them, putting them on letterhead, and we should be set to go momentarily. Right, Amy? Uh, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much done. I'm sorry. I should I have included that for this meeting? Um, yeah, but yeah. that's that's fine. I just wanted to update everybody where we're at. Yep. And so that's going forward. And um, we did have a piece of mail from ERM relative to uh, Pan Am Railroad, Railroads. And it's just a notification to notify us and the DEP and that their ERM's website is no longer functional um, due to changes over the past decade and no longer being, being maintained. Um, so this letter just saying that ERM is notifying us that moving forward, all the public files associated with the site can be viewed at the Mass DEP <clears throat> Western Region Office. So just a notification on that. That was the only mail. I don't know of any other items unanticipated in the last 48 hours. Do we cover everything, Amy? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I was just gonna ask, do you want me to send out, because I, as I said, I think the, um, the special OOC document is pretty much ready. So do you want me to just send a copy to everyone? Because you pretty much okayed that as is, so I can just send it out and everyone has a copy. Yeah. And why don't we do okay. that? Because we okayed it last time. And yep. we're going to make two copies of it. Uh, one copy for us that has um, some red highlighted fonts in there to kind of explain that there's other provisions that relate. And uh, another copy, with, we take those out. And uh, if we do have to share it with the public, et cetera. Yep. Okay. I can do that. Great. All right. Well, anything else tonight, folks? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Feel free. 9 14 p.m. <laughs> May I have a I'll second? second? I'll second. <laughs> All right. Motion's on the table. Take a roll call, Kate. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean. Sean, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So the meeting is adjourned here at 9.14 or so. And thank you for all your time.